Good morning. You know, Tom was a smart child and he was so excited to go to school. But after just a few weeks, Tom struggled to sit still. His hyper hyperactivity made him want to move and he was distracted and he could not focus. Well, the teacher called a meeting with the parents. Some of you probably have been in some of those meetings. I know I have. And the teacher said that Tom was a difficult child. In fact, she didn't know if he'd ever succeed. Well, it didn't take long and mom pulled Tom from school. You see, Tom loved to learn. In fact, he was a voracious reader. She couldn't keep ahead of him. And in all of that reading, this hyperactive Tom filed and received over a thousand patents in his life. This was Thomas Edison. You know, mom and dad could have believed the label of Tom as a difficult child and given up on him, but they fought for him. Let me ask you a question. Have you labeled your marriage difficult or failing or struggling or not worth it? Have you given up and you're not willing to fight? Well, just like mom and dad fought for Tom, maybe it's time to take, take a step back and look at your marriage and give it another chance. Most of us, our marriages get bumpy from time to time. We feel let down, we're, we're disillusioned, and we're disappointed, honestly, in our marriages. But that's not a reason to throw in the towel. Even though our happily ever after took a turn sideways and are rarely happy anymore, what if you changed your mind? What if you chose not to believe your own dire assessment of your marriage and, and looked at what the Edison was in your marriage? What, what is difficult? What is, what is the creativity lur lurking in the background of your marriage? What if you could dig in and wage war to save your marriage? Would you do it? You know, as you think about a child being kidnapped, most parents <clears throat> would move heaven and earth they would do whatever it took, finances, travel, whatever needed to be done to rescue that child. Well, I think it's time that we rescue our marriages. You know, Dr. Joe Martin says that the number one reason people divorce is, is selective hearing. Now, when I read that, I thought, what? Really? But when I read what, what he, how he explained it, it started to make some sense to me. We hear what we want to hear. Now, that's true across the board in our lives. If you, if you listen to a conversation, you know that you're cluing into certain parts of that conversation. And so we hear what we want to hear. We do the same thing in our marriages. So how can we avoid the destruction that can come by that selective hearing? Well, in my blog this week, I've got seven anti-cultural tips that you can apply to your marriage to help fight for it. But I'm only going to talk about one today, and this is the one that kind of intrigues me the most. I read an article by Dr. Neil Lavender, and it's called The Number One Reasons Most Marriages Fail. Dr. Lavender uh, does a lot of marriage counseling and uh, recovery coaching, um, and he's got some really great points. But one of the things that he says is he calls it a failure to wed. Now. Wait a minute, we're talking about people who are married, right? They actually went through the wedding. But what he says is the failure is the failure to develop the we in the wedding. Did you catch that? The we. You know, when you're dating, you're intrigued by the differences in the person that you're dating. You, you, you love all of their quirks and their nuances and the things that, are, that they do differently than you do because and sometimes it challenges you. If you're very outgoing, you're really thrilled by someone who's a little bit quieter and seems a little bit more steady. Maybe that person is a voracious reader. But after you get married, you want to go out and do things and have a lot of fun and be spontaneous. And this person who's a little bit more stable and you felt really comfortable with, they're not really spontaneous. And asking them to be spontaneous really stresses them out. You loved his bookishness in college, but now you're desperate to get his nose out of the book and give you some attention. He's frustrated because you're pushing on him to get out of that book. And he says, what's wrong with it? You knew this was who I was. Why do, you, why do you want me to be different? Well, Dr. Lavender encourages us to find something that is we. Instead of trying to change each other to become like me, let's find our we. Now, this could be anything. And I'm going to really encourage you to, to think outside the box. In fact, I want you to take that box and throw it away. All right? The box does not exist. We're talking about something that's outside of it. We want to come up with something very creative. So 
sit down and you're gonna have to turn off your phones you're gonna have to put things away you're gonna have to give your full attention to each other and however you want to do this but this is a challenge to you I want you to have a brainstorming session now one rule in a brainstorming session there's no wrong answer nothing gets poo-pooed in the brainstorming session you don't get to say well that's stupid no it's not it's an idea and our the whole goal of a brainstorming session is to get ideas so you're gonna jot them down, whether you jot them down on a piece of paper, on a chalkboard, you be creative in how you jot them down. Nothing electronic because that's going to distract you, okay? So I would love you to do just pen and paper or uh, if you have a whiteboard or something like that, do that. But jot down all of these ideas. Then what you're going to do is you're gonna take that list, maybe at another type, and over maybe 30 days, you're gonna identify a few things on that list that you both go, hmm, that's kind of interesting. That sounds like fun. Let's try it. And then you're going to try one. If it doesn't work out, okay, so what? You tried it. Try something else. Let me give you an example from my marriage of one of the ways that we have developed a we when we travel. When we travel, my husband likes to plan the whole trip out and he's really, really good at it. I love to be a little bit more spontaneous. So on one of our trips, we decided we were um, we were actually in Europe, and over a three to four day period, we were going to be driving a certain section uh, of um, the southern part of Germany. And we thought, well, let's just try it. Let's try not having made reservations for where we're going to sleep, and we'll just find a place along the road. It'll be fun. That was my idea. Well, it was fun. We were very spontaneous in what we did during the day, but what I discovered and what my husband told me later was that all day long all he could think about is where are we going to sleep and so that caused him to not enjoy our adventures during the day as much as I was enjoying them I was I was totally fine I was having a great time until I realized the stress this was causing him so what we've done to develop our we <clears throat> is we plan out the big pieces of our trip. Where are we going to be, the areas we're going to be in, and we identify a place to stay. And, you, and what we've decided is we like to stay there for several days and then we day trip out of there. And then during the day trip, I get all the spontaneity I want where, oh, that looks interesting, let's go check that out. And he's game and we have great because we know where we're going to stay. So it's a win-win for both of us. We are developing our we. What are some ways that you develop your we? I'd love you to jot some ideas down, make a comment below on what is a way that you're developing your we. Well, in my blog this week at KirstenDSamuel.com, that's K-I-R-S-T-E-N, D as in Diane, Samuel, S-A-M-U-E-L.com, I give six other tips that you can apply today to fight for your marriage. The thing is, you married this person for a very specific reason. One of the second thing that you need to do is to remember why because the, nobody's going to fight for your marriage but you and if you're struggling and we all do every marriage is going to struggle at some times it's time to stop and assess what's going on if you need help reach out for it if you would love a free coaching consultation with me just to kind of talk through some things that are going on in your life click the button on my website that says free consultation I'd love to talk to you but today would you determine to treat your spouse with respect even if they're not reciprocating it right now I would, I'm, I'm challenging you to choose to fight for your marriage. It is possible to save it. Look for what's positive in your marriage. If, you know, earlier this summer we talked about um, finding something to celebrate every day. So today, apply that to your marriage. Practice gratitude. Write down those things that you're excited about in your marriage. You know, when we were going through our crisis several years ago, I never would have believed that my best days were ahead. But I'm living the best days of my marriage now, and I know you can too. So, it's not going to be all rainbows and sunshine. It never is. But not dealing with the problems in your marriage is not going to improve it. But if you'll confront them head on, if you will seek help and you will seek resolution, your marriage can be saved and you can turn it around. You know, your marriage is a one of a kind. Don't risk it. Don't walk away and don't give up. Remember Thomas Edison's parents. They believed in him and found a solution. And he became one of the greatest American inventors ever. Until next time, have a great day.